pleased to talk about some examples, but I think before we start with the concrete examples, we should put it a little bit into um, into the context. So as you see on this on this chart, um, there is a visual representation of the relationship between uncertainty and time. As you see, as we move to the right and um, to more distant future, um, also the uncertainty increases. This is certainly a very obvious conclusion, very intuitive, but the consequence is that uh, the planning becomes exponentially more challenging, but also more necessary. So in, in a few words, uh, the, the more uncertain the environment, the more difficult planning becomes and the more we want and we need to plan. So how do we break this vicious circle. I would like to go to the next slide where I show you um, three different stages of planning relating to the ecosystem that Hans showed before, strategic planning, financial planning, operational planning. As you see again, I tried to distinguish them with strategic planning being more concerned about the distant future, financial planning um, somewhere in between and the operational planning more concerned with um, present or immediate actions and decisions. Um, now it is important to understand that the, uh, the, the boundaries between these three are relatively blurred. It's not always easy to distinguish between the three and, and they should all be based on some constant uh, consequent assumptions and should be interrelated to each other. Now um, I would like to show them to talk about each one of them separately and therefore on the next slide I would like to start with the um, subject of strategic planning um, here in uncertainty is the highest and it also compounds over the years because we are concerned with a more distant future. Um, the planning will not be too detailed at this stage, ownership will stay with the board level, uh, typical scenarios um, may include some technology breakthroughs or some policy changes. Um, just to name a few. And, um, and this is a good time to, to make a first example. Um, could you imagine a policy change that wipes off 50% of your business overnight? There, there are some examples. Um, I would like to quote one from my professional experience. In 1987, after the tragedy of Chernobyl, um, the Italian government called for a referendum to decide on the future of nuclear power generation in Italy. The population voted against it and construction of three plants um, stopped. Five years later, I started working for the company that should have supplied all the components for these um, plants and was tasked with divesting the businesses that the company had acquired after the referendum in order to compensate for the lost business. So this is a case where understanding the drivers of the business and your possible futures, in this case, public sentiment versus nuclear power generation after such a tragedy as Chernobyl, um, certainly helps <coughs> planning for a similar scenario and uh, uh, prepare the company better in case um, this materializes and this would have saved um, a lot of investment money. So this is a case of strategic planning. I would like now, now um, to go to the next slide and um, analyze financial planning um, in bigger detail. Here the uncertainty is probably lower because we are not concerned with the very distant future. We're planning for a shorter time period, but we want to plan in more detail. So PNL, balance sheet, cash flow statement, possibly a cost center level, possibly on a more monthly basis. Um, at this stage, I see ownership residing with the finance department because they are the ones who use it as a steering and, and a control instrument. Examples of scenario planning in this case could be future product launches, changes in competitors or customer structure, for example. And if you take product launches in the food industry where I'm now, um, the vast majority of product launches flops within the first five years of life. So if your results are highly dependent on the launches of new product, I would definitely recommend that you also ask yourself the question, okay, what happens to my plans if products fail? Because most likely, sorry to break the news, but most likely some of them will fail in the future. And so what possible measures can we take? As far as customers are concerned, um, we hear unfortunately every day about companies in financial distress. Now imagine the case when a whole country would go bankrupt. Difficult to imagine, yes, but uh, you may remember the financial crash of Iceland in 2008. 
And as a reaction, the Icelandic government restricted uh, foreign exchange transactions that were not related to trade in basic food and pharmaceutical products. At the time, I was responsible for that market for a confectionery company, um, which is quite difficult to consider as a basic food category. Um, what can you do in this situation? Well, this is a business that is uh, obviously influenced by some macroeconomic indicators. Uh, consumer uh, purchase power is naturally is, is obviously very important, and um, there were already some very strong signs that the Icelandic um, economy was facing some problems. In this case, if you identify macroeconomic indicators as a driver to your business, you need to monitor them constantly. You need to analyze signals coming from the economy. And then you can take some countermeasures because in such a case, whether it's a, a, a country or a single company, um, you can manage the scenario in several ways. For example, you can accept only smaller orders, more frequent orders, you can shorten your payment terms, you can move to advanced payments in order to hedge or limit your exposure. So these are um, quite um, real example um, of how you can manage um, scenarios in the financial planning. And this leads me to uh, my final slide regarding operational planning. Um, similar considerations can be applied here. The range of possible futures, because you are planning for a very short term or the day after, basically, um, is quite limited. Often, is a binary um, type of scenario. Yes, no, and ownership, of course, uh, needs to stay with the line management in order to shorten uh, decision time, implementation times, when it comes to um, putting them into practice. Typical examples here would include short-term capacity planning, some shifts planning, purchasing of packaging materials, uh, implementation of trade activities. Um, one consideration here to, to, um, to be made is that often we associate scenario management with the subject of being prepared for the worst. All scenarios need to be negative. Um, as a matter of fact, there are situations where you want to consider also scenarios that are particularly positive. Where, where the reality exceeds your expectation. Um, yeah, this is very important when you when you are doing some some trade activities or when you are uh, planning for production of seasonal items, for example. Um, nothing is more embarrassing than um, investing in a product, fighting to establish it on the market, or spend money to promote it, and then you realize you don't have enough capacity, you don't have enough personnel on the production floor, or you don't have enough um, packaging material. Um, this is also a case where scenario management can help you um, achieving the uh, defining the right level of production that you need. Um, because, for example, you can evaluate certain options and saying, okay, I need to buy more, more material that I would really need, but I can have um, for the bigger volume, bigger scale, I can have better prices. If uh, you are able to achieve, to, to employ the material maybe um, next year or, or for another activity. Um, so also in this case, um, you, you, you can um, utilize some scenario management uh, techniques in order to be prepared for um, whatever could happen along the way.